Hilton Grandmasters final match here in the European region. Swids versus Huntress is going to be the final match we do have, and it is going to be a Division A match. And it is going to have some impact into who plays in that relegation bracket next weekend. Huntress and Swids both having Warrior banned out Soto, but still an important match for these guys. Yeah, it's an important matchup overall. Um, it might look a little bit confusing on the surface as to why this is even relevant, because if you look at the current standings, Hunter Race is actually already outside of the relegation bracket zone in Division A. So people might be confused as to how he can fall when you know all he's doing is playing another match. There's no penalty for losing. Uh, problem is, is that Silvername has Swids under his tiebreaker belt. Um, the tiebreaker two is the sum total of the match wins of the players you've defeated, and Silvername has defeated Swids. So if Swids picks up a win here, that means Silvername's tiebreaker will increase by one and he will leapfrog Hunter Ace right. out of the relegation bracket zone. And the relegation bracket in Division A will be Felcane and Hunter Ace. Hunter Ace must win to not be faced with the threat of relegation and most importantly, to secure himself a playoff spot. Well, let's get into it. We did touch on it before the break, but it is going to be the Quest Warlock for Huntress going up against the Demon Hunter for Swids. And again, a matchup I think is actually pretty close. I think we've seen this go both ways in pretty uh, explosive fashion, Either whether it's the Warlock just completely dominating in the removal plus heal game or the, the Demon Hunter just stomping down the Warlock in, in like the first few, you know, first five turns of the game. You see, right. you can see it go both ways. So I think this one is just extremely close. Right. And here's that exact dynamic I talked about in the previous series about whether with Dark Skies in hand, maybe Hunter Ace wants to be looking to increase his hand size here with a life tap as opposed to keeping it the same size by playing Questing Explorer. But at the same time, there's just a juicy 2-2 two -two on the board that it looks like this 2-3 can quite happily That's gobble up. And the life stat... The, the life tap still costs him, right? It means mm -hmm. he'll be put down at uh, uh, 26 uh, and not potentially, say, 28 if he just let the 2-2 two -two attack phase for some reason. Uh, right. And also, there is a consideration that with uh, an Aranasi Broodmother already in hand, it's to a certain extent one less you can draw even though obviously plot twist exists but i think in in the perfect healing world you want to say uh naturally draw them plot twist them twice and then naturally draw them again to, to have like ultra heal but with one already in his opening hand that is just a little bit less likely to happen yeah but this is now the scary part because with beaming psychic hitting the board and with no life tap on the previous turn the amount of health on board is quickly outscaling the amount of damage that Dark Skies is able to do when it comes down. Yeah, in a roundabout way, an extra bonus for Vulpira Scoundrel is it's the three health minion. So it just adds a lot to it, as opposed to, say, to Overseer it would add four, but it would cost Swids a coin if he uh, wanted to hero power that. It's a nice eye beam he can prep if he wants to. Seems pretty hey. good. Uh, I'm so annoyed. Oh, so he got stupid. mana burn though from the discovery from the random. That's actually pretty solid. That's yeah. actually massive. Yeah. It is. Switch so really considering whether he wants to do more damage to Hunteries. No, I think he's considering whether he's coining mana burn this turn, but I I don't think there's any real reason to. Nope. If it was. <laughs> And obviously, it wouldn't work if this was the case. But if it was a turn where Huntress could, say, coin into a nether wing, sounds great, right? It makes sense. But into just a four-mana turn, the thing he would dodge is, what, tap plot twist? But Huntress isn't going to get max value out of that if he does that anyway. Maybe Swid's just saying there won't be a use for coin in the near future anyway. But I think he could have just done, say, to oversee a hero power coin mana burn next turn, right? Right. Would that not have been like felt better in the answers to you making a say to oversee a board? Mm. Well, either way, there's now what eleven health going into play. Demons. Thirteen actually is more than that, right? Demons. Yeah, I was gonna say he's gonna swing, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Will still get cleared up by rain, dark skies, though. If Huntress so chooses, is also very vulnerable to uh, Crazy Netherwing on curve. So 
Looks like Swidge is trying to hedge it. Probably a big enough board to be pulling out the Dark Skies clear anyway, if it is available. And he gets to soft test, or hard test, I would say, I guess, for the uh, crazy Netherwing here. He's probably kind of hoping for the Netherwing, honestly. So he deals three damage to Hunter Ace. <laughs> As in, hoping for the Netherwing if there is removal. For, <laughs> for this turn, should I say, not just hoping there's sure. removal. But yeah, yeah, getting the extra damage with the Metamorphosis in hand, so it's might just be eyeing up a quick game. It's still 11 in play, 11 health for the Dark Skies clear, so it would still have to be a two card clear from Huntrace if it's not mm. Craze Netherwing. That means no plot twist. I think he just has to, right? And just plan on doing the Abyssal next turn. Mm hmm. Really fun trace, no sense demons, so no natural Moag, so no nether breath, really uh, has limited him here, even with a substantial amount of card draw. Okay, not bad. We go Sa again. Yep, Sator, Battle Mage. Swing with the hero power, deal two, make a 4 2, a 2 2, and a 2 2. That's plenty of damage threatening again. I'm forcing Huntress to clear or taunt or heal. The good thing with the taunt plan is he then has Metamorphosis hero power swing uh, next turn. Yep. Oh, sorry, won't be able to swing. He would have used the charge uh, if he does it this turn, but still, Metamorphosis in a trade is still more than good enough to hack through a lot of the taunts that Huntress could put down. Yeah. And if there is no significant defense from Swids, then that Metamorphosis Hero power can just end up representing Lee yeah. straight up. Uh, Dark Skies number two, though, is enormous here. And he can whip the plot twist in. He can. Quest is only at eight right now, but his hand is pretty miserable. Yeah, yeah I think he's plot twisting just for stuff to actually do next. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> more, more than either maximum quest value or anything like that. Once the Nether Breath, once the Moags, once the Sense Demons potentially would still be good. Broodmothers wouldn't be the worst thing to happen. Okay, this hand is better already. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, those f the first two cards just tick the anti demon hunter box. Yep. Quest Explorer, not bad either. Nether Breath Ooze, Twisting Nether will actually be relevant down the line, but then also a Dragon to activate the Nether Breath and a Questing Explorer while the quest is still active. Yeah, good stuff. Oh, this is actually really sick the way it's turned out for Swids because he's not he doesn't need to play minions to set up lethal. Mm -hmm. Then there's no Moag threat unless it's good or, or there is, but it would have to be like Moag and then breath your own Moag for Hunter Ace, yeah. which although would heal a lot, just removes the minion from the board anyway. Right. Just a nice little setup there. It's going to be the heal from the uh, Aranasi, though. Yeah, which is a huge deal. Because now Hunter Ace probably feels like he can greed a little bit. And dig so for those Moogs, but he, he can't life tap to do it. What if he can play can, Netherwing what, this turn. What if he taps and Nether Breath's face? Sure. What happens if he life tap and hit Moog, though? What then? Draw the next Nether Breath next. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, okay, okay. Well, the problem is if he doesn't do if he doesn't do that, then he does nothing else, right? Mm -hmm. And like, I don't. I think he's. It sounds weird, but he's so far behind oh. that he can't can't be that passive. Oh wow. Oh. Well, that hurts. It's just ten. The life tap just isn't even an option. And again, Switz knows now there's one Desperation Nether Breath, which means there's no more. I think that means pretty securely there's no Moag in hand. He right. knows there's one Broodmother already oh. been drawn. There's the Moag! And he can't tap! He can trade Coil Coil into a Nether Breath. Well, he, yeah, he can Moag Coil Coil and then, like, Nether Breath his own Questing Explorer if he wants to do it that oh, way. Oh, sure, or he sure, can okay. Just yeah. trade and one Coil and then Nether Breath his own Moag Artificer if he draws it. Okay. That's also a thing. Oh, wait. He can actually. Wait. He could have drawn twice. He could have played his Ooze and Coiled, right? Sure. And but still have the mana? Way, 
Yeah, okay, doing it this way, he's still able to put up the taunt at the end of the turn, okay, though, sure, so sure, this sure. does actually seem like a smart way of doing it. <laughs> he needs the Volpera to offer him a one or zero cost card to win yeah. to win the game. Do you I beam that's, that's pretty likely, actually. <laughs> I beam, Twin Slice, Blur, Mana Burn, Consume Magic. Yep. Hey, that's the Mana Burn. He's going to get the job done. Swids, bit of a close one there, but Huntress could just not stabilize. And Swids going to take a relatively quick game one with a Demon Hunter victory over Huntress's Quest Warlock. Yeah, and Quest Warlock's woes continue, and honestly, Hunter Ace's woes continue at this point. It's been a pretty miserable season for him, honestly. He does find himself in Division A, which obviously is commendable. That was goal number one for all of these players, but just really has not put it together. And I think, honestly, uh, the questions for Hunter Ace have to come from the lineups. I, do, I don't think Hunter Ace has played badly at all, but I've certainly had questions about a lot of his lineups. There was that extremely weird rogue list that he brought one week. Mm -hmm. uh, there was his admittance that he didn't really believe in Zoo as quickly as he should have done and was bringing Galakron Warlock instead. He then went back to the well with Galakron Warlock for one week after Zoo got he nerfed also, again. He also which banned I find Zoo that week, he right? Did also ban he, Zoo, yeah. yeah, when he banned the Zoo out and left up Warrior Demon Hunter Rogue, I'm going to say. Yeah, I can't yeah, remember yeah. the third deck, but anyway. Uh, yeah, so there, there is some decisions there. And, and Hunter Ace, I have no doubt, you know, no doubt in my mind, He's a genius at Hearthstone. He is literally one of the best players in the world. But still, it's his and his teammates' jobs and practice partners' jobs to get the lists right, get the lineups right, get the calls right. And sometimes, no, no one can be right 100% of the time, right? Sometimes you miss. But I do yeah. agree with you. I feel like Hunter Ace has kind of just missed a few too many times this season, which is very unlike him. Yeah, I agree. And I think, you know, it's a huge part of it, right? I think I think on the contrary as well, I think Swids is not the best technical player in the world. I think there's been a couple of spots where he's made some plays I found questionable, a couple of spots where he's done some things that I think are just technically outright wrong. Um, but I think week after week, he's had incredibly good lineups. And I think that contributes to the fact that, you know, Swids is currently in a, in a more secure position than Hunter Ace was, even though Swids' second half of the season has got progressively worse and Hunter Ace's mm -hmm. second half of the season has started to get better. So they are actually, you know, moving closer together in the league table. And I believe uh, Hunter Ace could even potentially leapfrog him at the end here. Yeah, and bear in mind, uh, a big part of, for me of the reason why Swids is even in Division A is the uh, early adopting of Zoo from yep. him and the and the other French players, right? They were bringing Zoo before anyone else was, along along with Gallon, but Gallon's a French player, so that's fine. <laughs> I'm gonna go with. But yeah, again, when you talk about just getting getting the reads right, getting the deck choices right, the builds right, Swids and the other French players brought Zoo early and it paid off for a lot of them a lot of the time. So again, just another heads up play there. You might not be the best technical player in the world, but if you've got the good reads, it's gonna get you somewhere. But let's go into it. It's gonna be the Druid here for Swids on the top and Hunter Ace on this Demon Hunter on the bottom here. Yeah, and we see Swids here rocking the Starfall in his deck. Not exactly a given in Druid these days. In fact, it's pretty rare these days that we see people finding room for that card, even with how lean the versions are in terms of minions being played, uh, with Kael'thas being cut from most as well. Some even going down to one Mount Seller, which I think is lunacy, but that's fine. Um, even then, it seems rare that people find room to, uh, to fit a Starfall in, but... Swids even here keeping it in the matchup, and you can understand why when, you know, just about every minion in Demon Hunter will die for that card. They will never catch me yeah, it makes sense to me. If, if, you, if you're putting Starfall in your deck and not keeping it against Demon Hunter, just get it out of your deck. Right, that, 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 it seems so good. It'd be crazy too. And he does get the Wild Growth as well, which is a card that helps out just getting into that Starfall that little bit quicker. Right. Huntress, on the other hand, with this Demon Hunter, is not the overly standard list. Uh, he is, again, only running the one I beam a, a card I think is just criminal to not run two of. But he does run cards I do like. Crimson Sigil Runner, I still think, gets there. And uh, the two Mana Burns in Huntress's list. We've seen the power of Mana Burn, not only over this weekend, but over the last few weeks. Oh, I see this weakness! Swids resigning himself to a bit of a beating for now at least, but he gets the wild growth spent. Frees him up for the fungal fortunes on the following turn into the Starfall on five. Or on and, Druid five, I should say. And honestly, in a roundabout way, him drawing the two Mount Sellers, although on the surface looks kind of bad. The fact that he can fungal whilst having Mount Sellers in hand means that his chance of whiffing is almost zero. 
Crystal power on the Sator for sure. You can argue that you use it to heal for four here, whereas if you use the Starfall, you're going to heal with it for five eventually, or at least you have the potential to somewhere down the line since those minions then all die anyway. Uh, there's an X factor in that equation though, which is Beaming Sidekick, which is something that you should probably play around in that scenario by taking care of the must-kill minion while you can. Yep, and it's not the miraculously this demon's gonna survive a, uh or sorry get still get killed from a starfall now but it's just the fact that the other one uh, staying alive is a much bigger threat because it's the yep. satyr that summons more demons exactly also just has twice as much attack for hitting you in the yeah. head with Huntress though does have a highly aggressive follow-up here and you mentioned it it's all about the the five drops right and the turn five plays and he does have that uh, the combo of either Twin Slice with Gladebound at depth, or just getting those War Glaive equipped. Whoa! Oh, the crucial mana burn. I mean, to play for Hunter Ace. This is why I, I just can never argue with anyone putting mana burn in the deck. Because every time we see it, we're like, whoa, that's going to be I sick! <laughs> So here's the thing though, the way this game has played out, and the fact that it's the 5 mana turn now for Hunter Ace, I would have been surprised if the mana burn came down now, so actually that means that the Glowfly Swarm will actually be able to land here, 4 swids potentially, mm -hmm. but that does mean that if there's 4 damage coming back the other way, swids is just cooked, and guess what, there's 4 damage coming back the other way. Uh and that's it, and that's why I like this, because it's a highly aggressive setup, and really, it's the guarantee... Well, no. How yeah, I'm, I'm going to say guarantee, uh, because of the way the uh, the requirement of the spells that need a 7 cost to work for 0 work. Um, but uh, the, the guarantee that you lock out the Mount Cell turn very hard next turn, if you don't have lethal anyway. Alright, Hunter is. Ace gets himself over the line. Step number one, Warglaives and Hero Power will get the do job done. Nice and simple. Druid's woes against Demon Hunter continue. I will once again assert that this matchup is impossible. I don't know how many times you think you've seen Druid win. You're actually just mistaken. It's never <laughs> happened. And you see there, and you might look at that game and say, well, what's the point in Starfall then if you get like kind of the perfect starfall uh, as early maybe as possible as well against a uh, uh, demon hunter and you still just get stomped it's like well yes but huntress had a fantastic follow-up right he had all of the early aggression to push as much early damage as possible whereas uh uh, where Swid, sorry, just didn't have any of the little removal to slow the damage down for the first four turns. And then after the Starfall, there was just instant go, instant aggro. Sometimes a couple of one, may, maybe one of those things doesn't happen from the Demon Hunter, which then gives you the wiggle room to survive. So although Starfall won't just you know, solo win you all the games, it might help you out in some of them. We just didn't quite see it in that specific game there because Hunter Ace just had, frankly, the perfect start and the perfect finish for that one. Yeah, and I mean, sometimes it'd just be like that, right? Like, you can play a card to right. improve a bad matchup, and it's still going to be a bad matchup. It doesn't mean you just exactly. suddenly win it. That's not how Hearthstone works. In that scenario, not only did Hunter Ace have the perfect star, he had the beaming sidekick to play around the uh, the Starfall, particularly right. coming right. down from Swiz. Otherwise, that's a full board clear. That's two less damage, and suddenly that two less damage could have been uh, become relevant. It wouldn't have been because there was a Twin Slice backing up Hunter Ace's four damage at the end of the game anyway, but it could have been the difference um, mm -hmm. between winning and losing if uh, Switz was able just to get that one board clear down. Well, let's mosey on down to game number three, and it's going to be a Druid Mirror. A, uh, a lot of the time, a bit of a just a black and white matchup, right? Just because it, it feels like one player gets hold of the board first and never really lets it go. And then the, the damage stacks up so quickly that the opponent can't really respond to it. So there are some cases where either both players, uh, both players can, like can draw badly, and then it starts getting a little bit weird with like Mount Seller versus Mount Seller turns. But yeah. generally, whoever lands first wins first. Agreed. And we saw Hunter Ace very definitively landing first against Boar Control yesterday. But actually, despite being the player with the Glowfly in his hand. He's actually not looking great to be able to do that because minion, minion, minion draws means that his Glowfly Swarm is actually pretty yep. pathetic here. 
Yeah, there, and th there are obviously things that can happen that mean just because you land glow fly first doesn't mean it's the best. Like this. And again, I, I still, I'm going to wait, obviously, till the weekend's done and uh, see where everyone's at. But I need to just ask what this Kel'thas is for. Because yeah. I, I still just don't know, so I just don't know. Yeah. I, I could not give you a good argument. Uh, if this was on hot takes, I would just concede. Because I wouldn't be able to argue for it. Nice. Julie, no, I actually might need a sparring partner for hot takes this week since you know oh, tj no. is, is preoccupied so if you wanted to come on and just concede that that works for me uh i think as far as i'm aware doe is phoning for tj so surely ah, that lands on on, okay, on okay. in his remit i've got plenty of stuff to record for the curve thank you <laughs> can't do bring it on i'm ready for you but meanwhile while we've been talking rubbish swids does get that mount seller down, and now Huntrace does have the response, uh, the, the response to it with his own mount seller, and a lot of spells actually. Coin, innovate, bog beam, iron bark. He can make a bigger board, which is huge considering Swiss's hand is very small right now. Yeah. What I will say again, just because I'm very confused about why Kalthas has come back into this deck that. Huntrace currently has a handful of, you know, multiple zero-cost cards, and Kael'thas is garbage this turn. Right! Just Why is it there? <laughs> I, I'm confused. If you're not playing KT in this instance, then it should not be in the deck. I do think Huntrace should... Um... Oh, okay. I'm a little bit surprised there. I think at that point, you go all in with your spells, even though it does just equate to a hero power. Because then the response has to be Swids playing more spells whilst getting better beasts. And it's true, beasts. yeah. And Swids doesn't have that many cards in hand, right? Right. <laughs> so... It is immediately much, much better on the board right now to do so, but he does also have those two other cards in his hand that are also very greedy for those cheap spells that he'd be throwing away. Overflow but if he plays the would... spells, the yeah. Glowfly gets worse. <laughs> yeah, I was say, like, right? Kael'thas would need like an Overflow draw or something right. to actually become active at this point, um, but Huntrace does at least still have the second Mount Seller to come down, even in the worst case scenario. Yeah, he can make another mini board, right? It's just Mount Seller, Coin, Innovate, and then um, Savage Rock, even, maybe. I really like this diversion, by the way, from Swids. It looked for a second like he was just going to snap uh, Sarah Unleashed. But I think this is great recognition Oof. of the position. If he's going to keep just jamming Zixors onto this board, then help sign me up. Yeah, second taunt. And also, bear in mind, uh, I think that's both Fungals played for Swids. I, I want to say I might be wrong. You'll be able to tell me. Uh, it's just one, according to Oh, is it friend. just one? Okay. Yeah. But with the two primes in the deck, uh, that adds a lot of power to Swids' draws that often isn't there for Druid. Yep. At, at this point in the game, outside of exactly the zero bot. Yeah, and Hunter Ace really just doesn't have much choice. He's just going to have to go, try and hope for miracles, but they're miracles that are so unlikely. Moonfires just aren't really picking anything apart because of the soul of the forest. Yeah, it's just nothing doing. Can't even get through the uh, the Mount Cellar without Savage Roar in it, right? Right. When there's just one attacking minion available. Yeah, this board just looks lost. Well and truly lost. And now a much more comfortable turn for Swids to just uh, plop down that Ysera without really any chance at a punish here. Yeah, as long as these trades work out fine, which it looks like they do. I guess there's no world in which he doesn't play Ysera because his board is pretty full, is there? He has 18 okay. cards left. No, I don't think so. Right, okay, yeah, I just wanted to double check. Like, there's, there's odd times you get punished for it, but it's with 18 cards naturally in the deck. 19 with the six or if it trades of course then like it's so unlikely that you just burn like five portals i mean it's just a 412 as well like the four right right that's what the I mean, game right? it's just point, it's just yeah. worth it yeah and i think swids should just focus on clearing this board you saw that was a certain level of desperation from untraced 
And the same fact, I think it's a fair play to, to read that there's no overflow. Because I think it might have just been an overflow turn for Hunter Ace. Yeah, sure. To like refill first and then go off with Mount Seller to try and recover the board at that point. Okay. No, just a quick check. Nope. KT. Still bad. Gonna hero power through the bear, take a value trade, and then overflow to give himself max value. Doesn't allow himself any more mana expenditure after the overflow unless he hits innovates, but he's looking to draw zero cost spells here anyway. To be able to pick things apart, crystal power would have been one of the cards he could play. Oh, 25 cards, and he gets two portals. I mean, obviously, a chunk of those are portals, obviously. Still exactly kind of, two portals at that kind as well. of crazy <laughs> and there's an overflow so if he loses this port he just presses overflow and refills on dragons oh i like just doing it now no and you're right have, because you just don't have to care it, it, like if you get two more dragons here and then burn all the rest of them gg you've won like well, that's the worst case scenario and the game's yeah, over yeah, in yeah. your favor yeah that's it isn't it like the, and, and also because the deck's so big you're not that likely for that to happen anyway. You're likely to just draw all the spells you've not drawn this game. Right. So, which, which only make your board stronger. So it's just, as you mentioned, a bit of a win-win scenario, actually, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, seems to be the only play. Just drop the Glowfly Soul. Huntrace knows there's threat of Savage Roar coming back from the other side. There's threat of Starfall coming back from the other side, both of which are equally likely to mess him up. But actually, right now, Swiss has none of that. Mm. Huntrace does have the Savage Roar in his hand. Which means this big push on board actually end up being very relevant, but the Zixor Prime can still have something quite significant to say about this situation. Maybe, luckily for Hunter Ace, there's uh, no way Switz can have a dragon in hand, <laughs> so he can't AoE this board down. <laughs> uh, this is actually kind of bad for Switz. He wanted the board space. As long as he could play four Zixor Primes, he could actually clean up, you know, multiples of the two twos plus Does the death rattles that came out of them. Does he have iron barks left? He does, right? He has used one iron bark. Hmm. Okay. Hmm, Fourteen cards, a bit of a stretch. I was wondering whether he should start with overgrowth. Hmm. To try because if he gets an iron bark, this feels a lot more comfortable, right? So I mean, look at the difference by not having the board space here in terms of how much of this he can actually trade down. Six or prime for two. Things of nightmares. Can't get rid of a yep. chunk of it though. Yep. Which is pretty big, big deal. deal still. Don't get me wrong. It's still very good. We're going to see the payoff. Power, rising winds, free overgrowth. Has then the zero cost spell from the overgrowth. Yeah, there's no need to play the Kael'thas first, though. It does not have to be in play to be picking up the effects as your turn goes on. I think a lot of people would argue that it just doesn't have to be in play. <laughs> Full stop. <laughs> <Yep>. Sentence. <laughs> Statement over. I think Swids did do a good job there of just keeping his cool, clearing off as much of the board as possible, even with this like weird six or prime play. Um, because again, as long as he just doesn't get burst down, he will just win. There's so much health on the board that he will just win eventually. Because the, there's just not a way for Huntrace to clear all these minions. Well, 
That looks like a lot of damage to me. 17 on board, 21 from Power of the Wild, 1 from Hero Power, 22. Swids is going to go out to a 2-1 to one lead against yep, Hunter Ace and Hunter Ace. The Wax of Dread Living, huge. Yes. But again, kind of a pointless card to kill over the long run. You would generally do want to focus on other things, and that's just another card that can go back into the deck. But now, oh boy, Hunter Ace finds himself one game away from having his season extended in the wrong direction, you could say. He'd like to be going to the postseason either way, of course, as most players will, but he wants to be playing in that playoff bracket, not the relegation bracket. And right, right now, in the way this series is going, that is where he is heading after seeing Kalento and Pavel get relegated outright from Division B. Another former world champion and arguably uh, the player with the greatest reputation for Hearthstone ability in the world over the last two to three years in Hunter Race uh, could just be fighting amongst them in that relegation bracket, facing relegation himself. Yeah, and that's the problem. Maybe we, we've not spoke about it too much over the last few weeks, but... We've talked a lot about Division A. Well, you, you are relatively safe, right? You know, you, even if you do the worst, you, you could go into the relegation bracket and still have a good chance, right? The problem is, though, there are so many playoff spots for Division A. These players will be kicking themselves if they finish bottom two because it just it just shouldn't be good enough to them, right? Like, it's so likely they can land a playoff spot because there's six of them. Uh, being in that bottom two, doing the worst you could do in di the best division must just feel horrible for, for maybe oh, different me reasons right. and obviously the players being auto-relegated, but still, it's going to feel pretty bad because then, one, there's a chance you get relegated, but two, you just miss out on a relatively straightforward way to grab a playoff spot. Yeah. And it would be oddly poetic if after the drama of last season, where Hunter Ace played against Swids with Orange's life on the line, and you know, some say failed to defend the honor of his friend, he's now back in exactly the same position again, playing against Swids, but this time it's his own GM career that's on the line. And again, he does have a second chance, and a third chance, and a fourth chance, if he's gonna get lose through this and go into the top of the relegation bracket as he would in the position that he's in. But still, chance right now just ignore all that and just go straight through the playoff bracket instead. Swid's so only having Rogue to take a win with, and is this stealth version? The double Shadow Weavers in there, Greyheart Sages, but no questing adventures if you've been uh, keeping up with the shenanigans of Rogue over the course of this weekend, at least in right. the European region. So uh, there is a difference there, but we are going to see the Shadow Weaver get dropped down now. And keep up the pressure here, but how do you feel about the Rogue versus Quest Warlock matchup? I feel like it's a, a pretty strange one, honestly. It is. Um, I certainly, in my experience, was finding it a good matchup when I was learning Quest Warlock initially. Um, queuing into Rogues, it seemed like they do not also, don't really have the waves of threats to get over the line. You can ration out your removal you know, pretty well. Um, and get to the point where they're just kind of helpless, and then you're just free to, to do what you want, develop board, mm -hmm. Alex them, Mally them, whatever your wing condition ends up being. But that quest to rebuild is a problem, but that's not what Hunter Ace has to deal with here. So I think I would take the quest warlock side in this matchup, okay. just based on the exact builds. In the shadows. Oh, okay, well, that's a draw. Spy Mistress Greyheart Sage, though, is, gonna, is a combination that gets me extremely excited for some reason. I don't know why I love doing this so much. It's not that cool. Can you explain to me why I love this combo so much, Raven? I don't understand. It's a combo that draws cards. Yep. Let, let's let's analyze, Salt. You like stealth version of Rogue. Yeah. You like a Warlock deck that's literal quest is to draw cards. I think you're yeah. just a, a card draw addict, my honestly. My favorite deck and of I... all time is Patron oh, Warrior. My second favorite yeah. deck is Handlock. And I yeah, imagine I think, you quite I liked Old Miracle developing. Rogue with Gadget Zen. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think a theme is developing <laughs> yep. here. Yep. I can see a uh, likeness kicking out here. But, put that to a stop, that's a massive Edwin Van Cleef out of almost nowhere. And Hunter and Ace clap. has to piece oh. something together because... Is this double Mohawk Soulfire? <laughs> Double Moog oh, Soulfire. It Are hurt me to even me? say those words. How has it come to this? Has technology gone too far, Raven? I think Van Cleef might have gone too far, some people would agree. 
16 damage from a soul fire blows the sense demons out. Just seal of fate it for 12. <laughs> Oh. I said seal of fate again. That's the first yeah, time I've know. done that in ages. I the don't care is anymore. to me, Raven. <laughs> it's getting to us all. Hmm. Just eviscerate a fate for a hundred. Just pharaoh cat into a mermy and then pop off with your underbelly <laughs> angler. <laughs> or shadow step this nether walker and get demons. I don't know. All the options in the world oh, for Swit's here. And it looks like he's just going to play Kronks. Six six in play. Sure. Saw one Dark Skies. Hand's pretty small, so Abyssal Summon is not that scary. Mm -hmm. All right. Also, what's his guy? Has he invoked yet? Once. Oh, once. Okay, I was going to say, I'm getting too excited. I did uh, miss it, I think. Yeah, it's Coil. the uh, praise Galakron buff that you see on the Greyhound Sage right now. Ah, right, right, right. Really tough turn here for Untrace. Coil looks fantastic, of course, on the 4 1, but that then just locks what? out his six cosplays, so this card, yep. this draw has to be insane. And it heals. It means he's going to tap and take the two damage again. Nether Breath, not going to be enough to clear out the Kronks. And that heals and he for four this game. That's all it yep. does. Doesn't have any more Ags left. Oof. <laughs> what is this turn? Pharaoh Cat Seal. Seal. He just wants to hit something chunky off the Pharaoh Cat. I mean, that's not Money bad, I guess. I think he wants to just hit the Seal as well, just to go Galakron draw two next turn. I think I would use one Seal, yes. Yeah. You're only, you're only doing it to a 1 1, right? Yeah. Eh, he disagrees. Okay. Oh. Setting up the most damage with this dagger, he does have a viscerate as well to follow up with. Mm -hmm. And he, he knows Hunter Ace has brood mothers, but he also knows he can deal with brood mothers, so So it's probably just doesn't care about that. Yeah, I mean that's the thing, right? Hunter Ace only plays one taunt at a time here, and it's not like you can double seal fate any taunt that he plays. Right. That's just not yes. a legal Hearthstone play. So just mm -hmm. having one of them reserved seems better, especially when, you know, you develop a lackey there off the seal fate as well instead of the dagger which might end up representing more power immediately than the dagger would well it's, this, this crunks is just getting there at this point hunter ace had to tap because again even though you know we can see switzy's hand and hunter ace cannot he knows the broodmother at w worst just gets farmed by crunks anyway and allows switz to just play a whole turn out of whatever he wants it's just leaving now what's Raven. That, eight? Nine. It's just lethal. Yeah. Wait, no, there's no leak. He doesn't have a combo activator right he, now. He has oh, he's, he's his own face. Own face. <laughs> it's lethal. Oh, God. Is this how we're ending today, Saul? Abilities. Is this what's going to happen? Oh, that's, that's way more boring. <laughs> that is going to be the game and a bit of a, uh, a frown and a nod from Huntress. As he accepts the defeat here, so it's gonna take the victory three and one. And is this matchup just cursed for Huntress? We'll have to find out maybe next time, but for now, Huntress is not in the best of spots, is he? No, I believe now, if our calculations are all correct, that that resigns Huntress to the relegation bracket. And um, for, for those of you who are Huntress's fans, then, of course, he is still in the best possible position in that relegation bracket. He is alongside the uh, alongside Felcane in Division A. Those are the least likely players to be relegated through that relegation bracket because they have three shots at getting the one win they need. Um, but it does mean that Silvername has now leapfrogged out of that relegation zone thanks to Swids, who, congratulations to Swids on the win, by the way, of course. But thanks to mm -hmm. Swids, Silvername's tiebreaker has just got that little booster that he needed because of Silvername's win over Swids earlier in the season. That means he leapfrogs Hunter Ace out of the relegation bracket zone in Division A. It's going to be Felcane and Hunter Ace playing against Zim and Tice in those relegation bracket games uh, across Division A and Division B. 
Yeah, and earlier today and throughout the day, honestly, we've talked about, you know, uh, players with legions of fans. We talked about Tice earlier in the day, Pavel, of course, Kalento, of course, two of the players we are going to be saying goodbye to. But also Silvername, right? Although he didn't play today, the fact he is just safe. Uh, must be just fantastic because he also has an absurd amount of fans supporting him uh, in, in his community. So it's uh, great news for him. But those are the results for the day. Pavel doing his best, but it not being good enough in that match number one. And then Tice uh, dealing with Viper pretty straightforward with a 3-0 victory. Casey taking that super close head-to-head -head against Zim. And RDU also dispatching his opponent 3-0 in the form of Kalento. And then finally, of course, Swiss taking that victory over Huntrace. What a day, Sotl. Yeah, it was an insane day, an emotional day. Obviously, we started off very much on the struggle bus with the tech issues, but then it was the players who had the intense struggles in front of them. And now we see what are our final standings, and that means we have said goodbye to Kalento and Pavel in spot seven and eight over in Division B. They have no recourse. They are just relegated. Um, and this is going to be the end of them in Grandmasters. Hopefully not the end of either of them in Hearthstone. Um, Kalento did put out a statement on his Twitter, which you know you guys can go and check out about how he, how he feels about the whole situation. But we will not be seeing them in Grandmasters, at least uh, until they might try and re-qualify in the future through the Masters Tour. But um, either way, on the other side, Hunter Ace and Felkane are going to be playing out that relegation bracket against Tice and Zim, who are in positions five and six. But now, just to focus on the positives, you talked about how Silvername is safe, and that must make him feel great. It's binary in Division A. You're either in the relegation bracket or you're in playoffs. Yep. It's not yep. just like he's safe. Silvername has gone to playoffs with his 2-5 and five record here. So everyone 6 and above in Division A and 4 and above in Division B at least has the right for a play-in into our final playoffs uh, bracket next week. Uh, yeah, pretty huge overall, and again, just uh, uh, although, of course, we're focusing on Pavel, Kalento, and the players that are in the, the dicey spots for next weekend. Next weekend does have those playoffs as well. Not only just the relegation bracket, but the playoff bracket, where we're going to see Ball Control, Yala, Bunny Hopper, Swids, and everyone else who's qualified play it out for the chance at uh, getting a spot at the World Championship. So, absolutely huge, and a congratulations to those players that have done well and booked their spots in the playoffs. Very, very well deserved over many weeks of Hearthstone. <laughs> Yeah, and in particular, I want to single out RDU for a, a, a specific congratulations because all the way back in week number one, Raven, I said that I wanted to see RDU show me what he's got in Constructed because we don't get to see enough of it anymore with him, you know, primarily at that time streaming battlegrounds mm -hmm. and he absolutely showed up obviously he ended up in division b but he did everything he could from that point and now winning division b with a five and two record can't really ask for much more than that uh, happy to see rdu back sitting there on top of a division arms folded right. looking proud of himself as he should be yeah, and uh, just another reminder as well, this is the last week of Round Robin, but not the last week of Grandmasters as, of course, we have playoffs and relegation uh, bracket to play out next week. So again, another exciting week there with maybe uh, we're going to be saying goodbye to one more player, but we're also going to be celebrating the playoffs and whoever does the best in those spots. So still a lot to watch. But before we go, Sotl, final words, do your thing. Oh, I don't have it in me today, Raven. You it's do. been too much. Please, dear viewers, we have been through the ringer today. So if you are appreciating what we have done for you and what all of these players have done for you, uh, the ones that we will continue to see and the ones that we aren't anymore, the number one thank you that you can give us is a subscription to our Hearthstone Esports YouTube channel. While you're there, make sure you ring that bell so you're receiving all of the push notifications and you're seeing the streams show up in your feed, you're seeing our video content show up in your feed. And while you're there, take a look at that videos page because we make a ton of original content from stupid debates between me and TJ to weekly roundups to mulligan advice from Gia and just, you know, the craziest moments you can possibly imagine uh, with Derek Brown. So make sure you check all of that stuff out. But most importantly, please don't remember to hit subscribe. Don't remember, please do remember <laughs> to hit subscribe underneath that video player and make sure you tune in next week for the thrilling conclusion of Hearthstone Grandmasters. Yeah, it's been a day of ups and downs here over in the European Grandmasters. And if you want to go through that all over again, then the Americas are coming right up after this. Uh, Doa and Froden are going to be bringing you the final day of the round robin over there and work out who is going to be relegated in the Americas region and who are going to book their spots into playoffs next weekend. But from Sot and myself, we had a crazy day. Hope you enjoyed it, but we'll see you next week.